There are people out there who will stand up and say, I hate Andrew Tate. Why? I hate him. He needs to go to jail. Like, okay, why? Because he's a fucking asshole. Well, my question is, why don't you like him? Why? I hate him. Why? Because he's a misogynistic asshole who... Okay, define misogyny. Traffic. They don't know why. They once, you, once the Matrix can program an emotional response into you, and you can't even logically, with your own words... You no, know, I hope he spends a lot of time in jail. Explain why you have that emotional, emotional response. You're completely a slave mind. These people don't think about anything. They believe what they're told to believe. They're, they're emotional. The world is, is full of cowards. If you tell the average person you're going to lose contact with basically everyone you can speak to, you're not going to have a voice anymore, you're not going to have a bank account, you're not going to be able to make money online, you're not going to be able to move anywhere, you're not going to be able to transact, we're going to wreck you head to toe, the average person can't deal with that, right? On top of the fa that, the fact that the average person is employed and they're scared of losing their job, the average person, as soon as you hurt their money, their life is over, right? Because you decided not to suffer. You have enjoyed comfort when I haven't, and that's fine, but don't expect me to look at you as my equal because you're not. I'll snap your fucking neck form of oppression no longer applies to me. I'm uncounseled. I can't be canceled. No, I can say what I want. My finances are secure. I'm not going to lie to you. You're comfortable, right? I am. If you were born, if you were born a hundred years ago and it was the 1920s, you'd be in some ditch in Northern France, living in the fucking mud, hoping not to get killed by a random sniper in some bullshit war you barely understand for four years. <laughs> then you'd come home and hope your wife hasn't been bombed. As, a, as an adult, what you need to do is, is seriously analyze every strongly held belief you currently have and work out where it came from. Is it personal experience? Is it from somebody who I care about and who I trust? Is it from what the news has said? Why do I believe this so much? Why do I have an emotional response to this? Where did it come from? People don't do that. They just sit there, watch news, watch social media. I'm supposed to hate this guy, so I now hate this guy. So you're a follower of the media? Yes. Yes, you follow what the media says. Um, yes. Yes. But that's the word. That's the world. The world has become ex exceptionally easy for a lot of men. It used to be a diff different place. Most men were cotton fodder. Most of us would have ended up in wars dying for fucking no reason. Damn. Now we don't have to do that. So because we don't have to do that, men think it's okay to just become comfortable now. You're not supposed to be comfortable. You were never evolved to be comfortable. You're supposed to be uncomfortable. Right. And if you find make yourself uncomfortable constructively, it's very easy to be anything you want. You talk about GTA, Grand Theft Auto. I know the game. I used to play the old one on the PlayStation 1 when I was a child. Oh, the very, 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 very first one, like 1994. Okay, okay. But I don't, I've never played any of those games, but I find it amazing that people will sit there and spend all their time upgrading that character, making as much money as they can, getting the best guns, getting strong, getting some hoes, meeting important people, getting the best car. They'll do all that in a game, but they won't do it in real life. I, I find that incredible. Like, I, I, my life is GTA. I don't need to play a game for GTA. If I want a gun, I'll fucking buy it. If I want a car, I'll fucking buy it. I want a bitch, I'll get her. It's me. I am GTA. I don't see why people play the games. They play the games because they're scared of loss. Because if you die in the game, you get another chance. If you lose in the game, you get another chance. In life, you get one shot. Damn, that's... But if you get some balls, if you get some balls... That's what life is as a game. That's what life is as a man. This is one big video game. You get to upgrade your character. You're not born with any value. As a man, if you don't make yourself valuable, you have no value. You have to get up and do it. Just like a video game, you start with fucking zero. You have to decide if you want to complete it, you have to upgrade your character. So I find it amazing that men are going to play video games and fuck about and waste their time instead of upgrading their character. Everyone knows what to do. If you had to become the most dangerous, intelligent, respectable man on the planet, you know you're supposed to go to the gym. You know you're supposed to train, learn how to fight. You know you know all these things. You don't do them. That's your that's your decision. It's your prerogative. I didn't I didn't make that choice. I made the choice to do it all. I decided all of that. And every single man watching this can do the exact same thing. As a man, when I put myself through hell. When I have had such exacting, such stringent standards for myself, why would I then have less exacting, stringent standards on the people I meet? Damn. Why would I put myself through hell to be me and then meet someone who didn't put themselves through hell and then treat them like my equal? No. I suffered when you didn't. So you're not my equal because you decided not to suffer. You have enjoyed comfort when I haven't, and that's fine, but don't expect me to look at you as my equal because you're not. I'll snap your fucking neck. That's because that's how life was. If we were still in the animal kingdom, the lions that you see on TV, they weren't just born big lions. They had to fight other lions. They had to fight to get that antelope. They had to fight other animals, hyenas, jackals. They had to fight to be the boss. We're living in a comfortable world now where people think, oh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. But you know what? 
to some degree, it does matter. It does matter. And I'm going to tell you who it matters to. It matters to your soul and it matters to God. I stand in the mirror with a pure heart. I know I am the best version of me that could possibly ever exist. I know that God is proud of me. There's nothing that God hates more than sloth and laziness. If God were to create a man and that man were to sit around and do fuck all, God will frown upon you. It's why you're never lucky. If you're listening to this and you think I'm never lucky, I'll tell you why. Because God dislikes you because you're fucking lazy. Start to work. Start to show God the beauty of his own creations. You'd be amazed how lucky you'll become. Wow. God is unhappy with these people. And inside their hearts, they're unhappy. We talk about depression, anxiety, all those things you mentioned in the earlier on this podcast. That comes from self-loathing. You loathe your own weakness. You loathe your own laziness. This is what all of these things are. I don't feel depression. How can I feel depression when I'm the most powerful version of me that I could ever fucking be? How can I feel depression when I could squeeze my own hand hard enough to break my own bones? How can I feel depression when I've smashed and destroyed 68 people's faces in front of me? Men who thought they could test me in fair combat. How can I feel depressed? It's impossible. To rewire your brain. That's one of the things you have to rewire your brain to do. And the reason your brain needs to be rewired is because anyone who is watching this stream below the age of 30, your brain is already broken. And I'll tell you it's broken. I'll tell you why. Watch your friends when they're on TikTok. How long can they even focus on a video before they have to change? Half a second? A second? Damn. Maybe. All of your minds are broken. You can't even focus on anything anymore. You're right. You are caught distracted to the point where you can't even appreciate the good things in your life. You're distracted. Your minds are broken. You need to rewire your mind and resist the slave programming. First thing you have to do is identify it. You have to identify what is happening to you. I use my mind to break the trap. It primarily applies to men because men are the backbone of the slave force. We always have been and always will be. And unfortunately now, if you're a law-abiding man inside the matrix, your future and the life that is laid out for you is nothing but depressing. You're gonna go to school, you're gonna get in debt, you're gonna get a job, you're gonna get a wife, divorce is coming, you're gonna lose the house eventually, your job's shit, inflation's outpacing your wages, you're gonna work, 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 no one's gonna appreciate it, now you're old and your life's over. It's not that we're not saying the things that everyone knows are intrinsically true, it's that everybody's afraid to say it. And that can only end when everybody stands up and stops agreeing and playing this game. It stops being cowards. That is the matrix for 99% of men. And you need to find a way to escape it. And I guess I was kind of fortunate from a young age that I always knew that the matrix was coming and that the system is designed to oppress. The people who make the rules do not make the rules for the benefit of us. They make the rules for the benefit of the people who make the rules. And I knew that. And I think every person intrinsically knows that. We need mass numbers of people to say, no, I'm allowed an opinion. You know what, Nigel Farage, and I don't, I'm not, since you have ended, I don't even know about his politics nowadays. I don't even know what he's doing. But he says something that was really interesting. He was asked about who runs the world. And I guess the person was trying to set him up for a question about the elites. And he said, truthfully, I'll tell you who runs the world. We do. Because we decide how much of this crap we're going to put up with. The problem is we're putting up with too much of it. The problem is everyone's a coward. Yeah, like if it's four in the morning and you're sitting in a gas station and a Lambo pulls up, you're probably thinking drug dealer or criminal. You're not thinking, oh, he definitely went to school. The system is absolutely broken. It's designed to oppress and that the majority of people who stick to the rules are gonna lose. And, and you're right, I get the same thing. Wow, thanks for saying it. Why don't you say it? And, the, and everyone is just terrified. And I, I don't wanna sit here on a podcast that goes out to this many people and encourage anyone to break the law in any form. Of course. But the idea of the law abiding citizen has been decimated in real time. In the last two, two, three years ago, you could stand there and proudly say, I'm a law abiding citizen. The last two years, if they have not taught you that being a law abiding citizen is going to turn you nothing into a fucking experiment for big pharma, then you're an idiot. You can no longer obey the law. It's, it really is truly crazy because fear has always been the control mechanism of man. The worst things that have ever happened in any society or any civilization since the dawn of fucking records has been done under the name of fear. Get the population afraid. What did Goebbels say, the propaganda minister of the Third Reich? Once people are afraid, give them a common enemy, they'll do anything you want. That's the, 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 the Nazis knew this. Everyone knows this, right? So it's a basic playbook, but I think it's also a larger issue. I think that things like keeping sure, making sure people are semi-depressed, making sure people are divided, making sure people are selfish, making sure people are self-obsessed, they're trying to destroy people's will to stand up and, and care about anyone other than themselves. These people can't think. <laughs> These people cannot think. It's, it's almost a sad realization when you wake up and understand that there's a large contingent of the world who cannot think. And when I say that, I don't mean that in some kind of 
you know, semi-sarcastic or, I mean that literally. There are people who have a strong emotional re reaction to subjects they completely don't understand. Once the Matrix can program an emotional response into you and you can't even logically with your own words explain why you have that emotional, emotional response, you're completely a slave mind. Not enough people look back on what they did and identify where they made a mistake. And some people will do it when they lose, but the true professionals do it when they win. Mm. When my dad was playing a chess game, if he won the game, he would still analyze the game and see if he could have lost, where it could have gone wrong, how he could have won faster, what mistakes he did make, what he did well, what he did wrong, win or lose. So many people will sit in a scenario where everything went wrong and go, in fact, correction, not so many people. I would say 75% of people will not ever self-analyze the situation or in the blame of everyone else. If they went to jail like I did, they'd say, they put me in jail because they're liars and the Matrix did it. Did it. Fine. True. But when I was in jail, I was like, how did I get here? What did I do? What did I say? Who did I piss off? What institutions want me in jail? What did I do that angered them? Me, me, me. I'm taking absolute self-accountability for everything. I'm not blaming anyone thing else because if I blame everything else, I have no control. Mm. If I blame myself that I can influence it, I have control over it. So 75% of people blame other people people or they blame other things. I lost my business because of COVID. No, you lost your business because of you. I lost my girl because her friends were hoes. No, you lost your girl because of you. And you lost your car because of you. And it's all your fault because that's the only thing that gives you control and power. The other 10%, we said 75%, the absolute highest echelon are people who are going to analyze every decision they've ever made, win or lose. I analyze my wins as well. See where you went right. See, see where, where I went right. See where I went wrong. See where it worked. You need to analyze your whole life. Your life needs to be feedback. You need to sit and it's, it's, it's over 10% into the year now. I wonder if anyone who made a New Year's resolution sits and says, it's over 10% into the year. Am I at 10% of my goal? Mm. Because your stupid ass said you were gonna be a millionaire when you were drunk on New Year's Eve. Well, you need to have 100 grand saved. Do you have 100,000? Have you even done the feedback on your own goal you made 30 short days ago to realize that you're nowhere near it and you're not gonna make it and you're a loser? No. Oh, I got the rest of the year. Um, and then wonder why they fail. You should have a daily target. And this is the mistake I made. Or you're going to sit and say, well, the environment was hard. It Something was a hard did, business yeah, yeah. environment. It wasn't in my control. Yeah, some garbage yeah. and just cope. You know who the worst of this? Oh, I'm going to jail. Here we go. Going to jail. Women. Women take no self accountability for anything. I'm a misogynist. It's true. No, they don't take self accountability for anything. And, and they don't because they don't have to because they are blessed with beauty from God. So they have a superpower, which is their beauty. And mm -hmm. their beauty allows them to get away with being completely lacking self-accountability because as a man, you have to be competitive. And the only way you can truly be competitive in war, which life is, is to be self-accountable, to blame yourself for everything because that puts you in the highest possible mind state to compete against everyone else who wants yep. the things you want. For sure. So you have to, as a man, self-analyze and be self-critical. Your every move. Every move. But as a woman, you don't because you're hot, mm. right? So they're not good at it. And I'm not insulting them. They're just not used to it because they get to blame other people and blame everything else because their beauty allows them to get away with it. Yeah, right. And that's the reason I said, my, my girlfriend said, would you ever let me drive your car? She's like, never, never, ever. She goes, why? I am a good driver for a girl. And I said, yeah, my four-year-old's a good speaker for a four-year-old, but I wouldn't put him in front of a stadium to talk. So it doesn't matter how well you could drive for a girl. You're a girl. But that's not even the reason. The reason I wouldn't let you drive my cars is not because I think you're gonna crash, I do. But that's not even what it's about. If I lent my boy a car, if I lent a man a car and he crashed it. He would take he, accountability for he'd it. He'd take accountability for it. He would come to me and say, there was a crash, this happened, I'll fix it, I'm sorry. Even if he believes it wasn't his fault, he would still, if he's the kind of guy I know, have enough self-accountability to go, this idiot pulled out of nowhere, but I was speeding. Mm. I was going fast, it's a fast car. I'm gonna fix the car, I'm gonna get it sorted, I'm gonna pay for it. If a woman crashes the car, that's not what you're gonna do. It wasn't my fault, you don't understand, it went wrong and he pulled out. And I'm like, well, how are you gonna fix it? I'm not gonna fix it because he pulled out. I didn't know, why are you yelling at me? This isn't my fault, ah. And I'm left with a mess. So why am I letting her car in the first place? I'm left with a mess and she's gonna say it's not her fault. 
She'll crash into a tree by herself and it wasn't her fault. And yeah, they'll come at me with the with the, the garbage about being a misogynist, etc. Very, not very often do people argue my points mm -hmm. because arguing my points is absolute destruction because they know they're wrong. You, you, and I'm not saying you have to break the law, but you need yeah. to find a way to do what the elites do, which is bend the law. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can no longer sit there and go, I'm just gonna follow the rules and it's gonna be okay. No, it isn't.